are you? I'm doing fine. How about you? Oh, it's a sad day. A sad day yes. today. We are bringing to you a special edition of Geeks and Ghosts because we can't find no other time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, today it was announced that Margot Kidder passed away at the age of 69. Um, yes. We both had the uh, the pleasure of meeting her and talking to her. She was she was sweet. She was very awesome. Um, yes. A little bit off her rocker sometimes, but she was really kind. She was... I met her in 2011. That's when I, I met her at uh, Wizard World. And she was great. That was back still during the time when you could actually walk right up to them. And there wasn't this freaking line that was out the door and it took three hours to see them and you could actually spend time talking to them um, so it was a great I, I talked to her for probably, probably about 10 minutes and uh, it was great I mean she autographed my stuff and I asked to get a picture she's like as long as you're buying an autograph honey <laughs> and yeah. I was like <laughs> Lois Lane called me honey <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yes ma'am whatever you need I will do it because <laughs> that was that's she was our Lois Lane you know yeah I mean I I still like the classic one from with George Reeves yeah I was turned but this was the one that we grew up with yeah no no Neil was the one that we saw on TV yeah but yeah you're right it was it was Mario Kidder that was the the Lois Lane that we grew up with you know that really made the impression on us because that was the movie, you know, that was the big blockbuster movie. It was the first time somebody really looked like they could fly, and, and damn, she was yeah. right there. So, no, then, no, and, 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 and when I met her, it was in 2015, and, and uh, she was pretty cool. There was no long line. She was just really easy. I mean, they only waited behind one person, but there was never a long line around her. Yeah. Um, and, and sweet person, she had, I guess, her handler with her. Who was yeah. handling, you know how they all have that person, what are you going to buy? Right. I'll take cash and then you move on. You know, but I, was, I, I spoke to her for a while. We took a few pictures and she was cool. I mean, there was nothing. I, yeah, she had her, her stories where she was a bit eccentric and, and stuff, but really kind woman. And this morning when I went to, I don't think you guys have a wiener central out there, but I think you might have seen them. A what? Uh, the Wiener's Nigel. What's that? It's like a more like a Midwest to West Coast thing. Biggest chili dog uh, uh, restaurant here in okay. fast food restaurant. If you look it up, you'll see what I mean. Okay. Everything they do is chili. But when I was waiting at the drive thru, uh, I looked down at my news and here comes the news that, hey, Marvel Kidder passed away. Yeah. And I was trying to post it on our site, but I couldn't because I was under the, you know, that tunnel that they have. So that's when I called you and yeah. you were at home doing, you know, stuff. <laughs> I was sitting <laughs> here <laughs> trying to piss off some people. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, I'll get it up there. Don't worry about it. Yeah. What's the, what's the name of that chain? Wiener. Wiener. Snitzel. Snitzel. Oh, there see. it is. Yep, there it is. Let me see. Wiener since so premium hot dogs. World's most wanted wiener. <laughs> <laughs> they look like regular hot dogs. Number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they don't look like anything special, but okay. Uh, but, you know, chili cheese fries and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And what they, because when they give you a large, they give you a bucket. Literally. Uh, you know nice. how you get small, medium? Yeah. You get large, you get a bucket of fries. <laughs> That's what I like. I like when you get a bucket of fries. Yeah, so everybody just uh, dives in. Exactly. Nice. That's pretty cool, but uh, yeah, it's kind of sad knowing that she passed away. And, and yeah. So now she's gone, and and uh, uh, I think what was his name? The the guy who played Olsen. Jimmy Olsen. He's yeah. gone. Krista Reeve I, is gone. I think he died a, a couple months after I met him too. Fuck, man! It's you. I've killed again. Stop meeting people. You are I no killed. longer allowed to meet any celebrities. No. Stop I've it. I killed Stop again. It. 
God damn, man. I even thought about that. I was like, does this qualify? I met her. And <laughs> two, two years later, three years later, she's gone. That's, uh, yeah, we could totally dip into the conspiracy theory and just, yeah. The, the, the Lou conspiracy theory. Anytime he meets a celebrity, they die within five years. <laughs> That's a good bet. <laughs> oh, oh. You uh -oh. ever seen the movie uh, Night of the Living Dead, the original, the black and white? Yes. I'll be right back. Oh, my God. Where are you going? Look, he's in his underwear. <laughs> oh, so, yes, I'm very sad. I have my Superman shirt. I have my Superman uh, uh, awesome big mug of rum it's mostly rum uh, uh oh what do we got so there you go oh my wow you know who she is right she looks good well this was taken back then oh okay <laughs> I thought that was more <laughs> recent. It looked pretty good. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, you know, Barbara. And she is so down to earth to to go up and meet. Because when they had another horror con or monster con. Okay. About three weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, my God. She is. Let's put it this way. I talked to her for so much. I got her email. Oh, and I asked her if she wouldn't mind doing a podcast with us. She goes, here's my email. Call me when you can, and we'll set it up. Okay, cool. So, since you, your, your relations for... Oh, my God. <laughs> Passing the buck. You freaking lazy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll take care of it. I just haven't, got, I haven't done anything with it because I mean, we haven't been able to touch base. So, I don't right. know... You know, when you want to do it, when should we get to it? We'll talk about that after the fact. So, but, wait, there's, um, there you go. But she uh, is so cool. There you go. But yes. There, that's her in the film. That's her. And, uh, yeah, damn. What's she look like now? Kind of like that, but older. Let's see. Oh, is this her, too? Where? Barbara. Oh, no. That was later. That's somebody oh, else. Her, Barbara. That's not that. That's different, Barbara. That's a different, Barbara. That's okay. a remake. <laughs> Damn remakes. <laughs> All right. But she looks pretty good for her age. Yeah. And uh, she's all into scuba diving. She absolutely loves scuba diving. Damn. And uh, so we were talking for, I swear, it must have been 30 minutes. And she, there were some people behind us, but and she was giving, if you were coming up to her, she was going to give you as much time as you wanted. That's cool. There wasn't no shoeing. And then, oh, because I needed a, everybody was giving her 20s for for uh, her picture. She goes, oh, I can't do another 20 because we don't have change. She goes, but if you have, you know, any ones and fives, I'll go up and, you know, I'll come up to you and I'll give you a hug. So, oh, guess damn. What? <laughs> I started looking for ones and fives. So, <laughs> so Sure was like how I'm gonna get some booty. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave her the I gave her the, the you know ones and fives that she needed to make change for later, and she goes, "Oh, I owe you a hug." So she ran up from behind, came over, gave me a huge hug, and I was like, "This is awesome I'm being hugged by Barbara," you know. <laughs> so I thought that was so awesome, and uh, uh, I, and she's the only reason I went to that one con. Because okay. when we went to the, the, the you know, Monster Con, yeah. they put it in a venue that was too small. Way too yeah. small. Yeah, I've been there. I mean, way too small. I mean, you had a, you had people waiting to get in, and it was a three-hour wait just to, in line. Okay. So if you had bought pre-tickets, you know, you were going to wait an hour. And once you got inside... It was just literally shoulder to shoulder. Oh, not just, that sucks. Not, not just grazing, but literally, boom, you know, you were playing football. Yeah. And, and it was just, I was like, they should have never moved it to the Pasadena convention. They should have kept it at the Burbank one, which yeah. is where they're going back to, I think, in September or so. Okay. But I don't think the, the – and then, on top of it, they only had one ticket window open. Oh, my God. 
to to so then they decided well we're gonna need to get some extra windows so they opened up i think three more and that still wasn't enough and it seems that the, the promoters did not expect to get this type of a, of a reception right response yeah, yeah. And it, it was just it was literally a madhouse and you walk in there and because of all the heat being given off by the people it just it got stuck yeah yeah and <laughs> I didn't care for that. All I did was I went looking for her. I, I got my autograph. I I was more than happy just by talking to her, hanging out with her, getting the email, and all that stuff. That I was like, that that that's it for me. I don't care about the rest of the con. That I got there for her. <laughs> that was it. Man, and usually you know we'll do we'll do walk arounds. We'll go back and forth. Yeah. Over things two or three times here. It was just if I passed it once, it was gone. You know, there was no way I was going to go back to it. Nice. <laughs> so, I, I hear you. So that sucked. Um, I, I think even though the place they had in Burbank was a little bit smaller than the Pasadena one, yeah. the advantage that one has was it stretched out. So they stretched out from the convention into the hotel, and there was a walking distance. So you had that, you know, extending of, of the people. So okay. it wasn't that bad. But I just hope. They don't do it in Pasadena again. Uh, it took away from a lot. Um, Roman went and he didn't care for it because it was too dark for him. He likes more of the Marvel cartoonish. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. You know, for him, this was more horror. It was yeah. dark. Um, I think there's some pictures I have to post on here, and and but yeah, it wasn't his deal. Okay. And more, and he walked out after like an hour. He goes, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So I hear you. that was cool. Good, good. I went to um, the great Philadelphia Comic Con uh, a couple weeks back. Yeah, I saw that. it was it was much bigger than before. This this is the con where um, we met Color World people. Mm. Um, so uh, it was it used to be really small, like it was dinky. Um, and like dinky as in you walked in and it was kind of a, a big, I guess, uh, um, open space. Yeah. And then they spread out the aisles like really wide. So it looked like it filled it up. <laughs> but you could tell it's like, all right, these these aisles are like huge, um, <laughs> like huge. So, um, but yeah. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. We we went. We got, what do we do? We got. Um, I got a few things. I got my Mars, my Area Fifty One passport. Oh, I saw that. Which is a little notebook. Um, but we uh, it's Brad and Rachel Kelly. I was having a brain uh, brain fart. That's who we had met from Color World. Yes. I just I I was looking at him. I'm looking at Brad's picture, and I'm like. I can't remember his freaking name. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Let me look it up. I got to look it up and it just popped into my head. Um, but this time they actually doubled the size and uh, they filled it. Like there was a lot of people there. Um, a lot of people, but it's still enough room to get around. It wasn't overcrowded, which was nice. It was 20 bucks oh. to get in. I think it was, no, it was like twenty two or twenty five. It was it was a little bit more expensive than it used to be. Um, Shit, that's a bargain right there. Still at twenty twenty five. It wasn't bad, it, except when you have because it was me, Donna, and we had Connor and two of his friends. Uh huh. So it was yeah yeah because now it got it was over a hundred bucks just to get in. Oh my goodness. But we made his friends pay their own way. <laughs> I said, screw you, little shits. <laughs> um, but I you want to go? This is what you're going to do. I, I found something, and I can't. I, oh, shit. I have to. Uh, I can't show you yet because I ordered it. But they had, like, um, there was a booth there that was doing custom backpacks. Oh. So it was, it was like a modular system of backpacks where you could. You could get like a standard little tiny backpack thing, and then there was bigger and bigger ones that all interconnected. Everything interlocked. Um, it had accessories to it, like uh, uh, a cooler thing that would keep a bottle 
a water cold. It, had, it was an insulated yeah. thing that snapped on. Pockets everywhere. And I, I probably stayed there a half hour and talked to the guy. And he showed me different things. And it's like all these backpacks. And there's a custom part of the backpack where you can actually put like your own picture or logo if you want it. Um, and then he's wearing something that it was a strap that came down and it was, um, like a, like a, almost like a satchel pack, uh huh. but it was, it was a little bit more workable for, for someone like me with notebooks and carrying stuff. And then he had yeah. stuff in the front. They were pouches that held his phone, his wallet. Um, there was a cooler thing and I was kind of interested in it and he kept talking to me and then, then came the moment he's like, you could do this, you could do that, and these all have secret pockets, and then you can wear it like I do in what I call chewy mode. And I was like, uh, sold. <laughs> I want everything you have on you right now. <laughs> That's because of the word chewy. Chewy mode, yep. So see, people, if you're selling anything and Kenny comes along, make some kind of Star Wars <laughs> reference, and you'll buy everything. And I'll buy it. I'm looking at it going, this is perfect for when, I, when I'm going out. And I, I want to carry, like, my notebook, um, pens, and, and different things for, uh, you know, the, the investigations that I do. And I don't want to carry a big pack pack. This yeah. has everything. It's So it's I like can, a fanny pack, but with a strap. It's on the side, though. It's not on the fanny. It's on the side. Yeah. It's just like Chewy's satchel. Um, it'll have a, bit, a compartment on the side where I can put my notebooks, pens, um, recorders, you know, whatever I need in there. And then on the front, there's a, a, a place that has a secret pocket that you can put money in. And then yeah. there's stuff that attaches on. Everything attaches and interlocks, which is great. Um, there's a place for your phone where you can open it up. You know how you open the patch up and you have to take your phone out? Well, there's yeah. a little strap. You pull the strap and it shoots it out a little bit halfway. But it's, it's grabbing your phone. Ooh. Like, I tried to ejected <laughs> i was like how secure is this you know because if i'm like climbing around and i want to get a picture or something and i pop this out like is my phone gonna pop out and the guy's like go ahead try it here's my phone put it in there what the hell is that motorcycle okay so i really tried to launch his phone um but it wouldn't do it and i was like oh, this is great and another pouch hooks on and it, it carries your wallet and any any other little things you want and then there was a for your water bottle it attached everything was like oh my god it was great i spent 112 bucks that's not bad i guess it's, it's not bad at all it's yeah. something that you need so it's gonna i don't have it yet it, it'll be here in about two weeks because i know i ended up buying a new backpack because i finally got my uh my my cannon back and so I went off and bought a new uh, camera bag for it, and I'm picky with them. Because yeah. I just I just don't like the way some of them are. And it just seems clumsy the way you can put it in, and so this one cost me. Well, it goes for ninety, but I got on sale for sixty because they were having that one thing. Hey, today only. So I bought yeah. it. What I liked about it is if. If this was the back side of it on your back. It has the pouch back here. Okay. So this way, you can unzip it, take it out. Whereas usually the other ones have the zipper back here. And what I don't like is somebody could pull the zipper, open it, you're walking around or whatever. Right. You know, and that, not that you wouldn't notice, but I just don't like that idea. Right. So here, it's the only way to get to it. I like it. It makes it easy. It holds four lenses, you know. So that's, that's what good. I did, but good. something like like your your Chewbacca strap. Um, <laughs> I did that Chewbacca strap, but with my camera, it just comes <laughs> right across my back. So, but no, that's what you need because you're always looking to get somebody pissed off. I'm always on the move. I mean, we're always <laughs> running around like every weekend. My schedule right now, every weekend for the next um, two months, is booked already, and we're going different places. Um, and we're always out. I'm trying to, to either hike or visit places that are abandoned that are way out somewhere and I got to walk to it or I just want something to grab, 
grab my gear and go. And and so I'm always looking for stuff like that. Uh, I have a I have a Pelican case for my camera gear, but yeah, it's not that. That's just to travel. Like when I when I go on an airline, it's it's a uh, I can carry that on because I don't like giving up my my camera stuff. I don't like putting it in checked bag. Uh, exactly. But um, I can take it with me, and then. But it's too too big to you know if I'm gonna go hiking or, or something like that it's it's not practical at all so I want something smaller and I can actually fit my one camera in it um, in the side part so it, it'll help I, I'm excited I can't wait to get it so when do you think you're gonna get it, the end of the month or uh, well no this says I'm looking at the email because I'm trying to pull up the website June 22nd is when I'll be getting it so it's yeah oh. it's gonna be more couple weeks. So the, day, the day I'm leaving for Cancun, Mexico, you'll be getting it. There you go. There we go. There we go. Now um, we all now we all have something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> I love getting shit like that. Oh my love it, love it, love it. He custom makes these each, huh? The say what? They're custom made, each yeah, one of them? Couple. I'm trying to find where the fuck it is. And I can't believe it doesn't... I'm looking at the email, and I'm like, all right, where... Shipping address... Da, da, da. Build your own bag with modular pack systems. Urban Spio. Tra equilibrium USA rocks. Urban culture merging. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Watch, it's probably like a scam, and I'm never going to get it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's happened to me once before. It cost me 40 bucks. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, shit. I got screwed. Oh, wait a minute. Here it is. is this hey, it? but if you think about it, it's a good way to make money. <laughs> yeah. There it is. I found it. Look, I'm going to show you now. I feel better. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck, I got scammed. So there it is. That's This is the custom part right here that says my bag better than your bag. Oh, where'd it go? No. Are you these can... all the places that he's going to? Yeah, that's all the places he was going to. Oh, let's put that up again. I all thought right. I saw Los Angeles in there. 2018, let's see. Las Vegas. Uh, Los Angeles, California. July 5th to 8th. The Anime Ooh. Expo. I'll be here. I'll be just back from, from Cancun. I want to try and find the the shit that I ordered and show you. Yeah, let's see what you're... Let's you're see. Uh, cart, contact, about shop. Dun, dun. So these are different things. Like, you can customize this back part here. Hey, shut up! Which is really cool. I thought about doing that, but it was a little expensive. Um, Let me see. Where's... Da, 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 shop payload. Just look for Chewbacca. <laughs> Skins, ordinance, buckshot. Let me see. Is it doing anything? It's doing something. It's looking. It's looking. It's looking. Here we go. So while, while we're waiting, did you steal the tombstones from, from uh, the Rocky movie? No, I did not. Damn it. I took pictures, but that's about it. I did no more. Come on, come Was on. there a bunch of people when you went up there for that or what? No. Um, what was funny is that I, I heard about it because it, it was at the Laurel Hill Cemetery. That's the cemetery you asked me about. The one that's off the side of the freeway when I go to your house, yes, right? Yes, the big one, yeah. And um, there. So it was there. I, saw, I, I'm, I'm a, I follow them on Facebook, and they posted it that... Uh, Stallone was there filming the day before and that they're leaving the stones out where they filmed for a couple days before they move them back um, and they usually sit at the, the front gate which I had no idea huh. um, so yeah I went there I went to the front desk talked to them they said yeah sure here it is they gave me a map found them pretty quick and I was all excited I was like oh cool I took some pictures and then another guy walks up and he is from Argentina. Uh huh. And he was doing a Rocky tour. Oh. And that, that's why he came out. Oh, shit. You're all out of sync again. 
I'm not out of sync. You're out of sync. You're out of sync. You right there. I'm calling you back. All right. Make sure you pause it. All right. There we go. All right. So there was an Argentinian guy. Argent Argentinian guy, yeah. <laughs> Argentina guy there that was doing a Rocky tour. And he had been to um, Rocky's house um, from the second movie. He was at uh, Adrian's from Creed, uh -huh. the restaurant that he that Stallone owned. Well, the character we'll Rocky owns. We'll get back to that restaurant in a moment. Yeah. And... He was at different places. He went down to the statue and stuff. And I totally forgot about Adrian's. And so I, I went down. <laughs> I went down and stopped at that little restaurant. It was closed. Um, but I, uh, I still, still checked it out. I took some pictures. I found the house from the movie. And I took some pictures of that. And that was it. Yeah, because I know I want to go to that restaurant. I looked it up. They have yeah. a really nice menu, and it's really set up. You know, when you go in there to go eat, yeah, they treat you really well from what I was reading on the reviews and everything. So it's one of those that I want to go back and check out. They, they are only open. I think they opened at like three or four. Yeah. P.M. They're only open. Yeah. They're, they're 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 open for a few hours, and but I think from when I read the website, they'll have like a a, a little group that goes to each table and they sing. You know, with little instruments and stuff like that. And I was like, ooh, I want to check this place out. So, hmm. shut up. Shut up. So, uh, yeah, so it's cool. I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try and get there. I think um, it's reservation. I think you have to make yeah. a reservation for that place. Yeah, it's tiny. It's, it's yeah. very tiny. Like, when you see it in the movie, it's kind of deceiving. Um, really? Because in the movie, I saw it and I go, that's tiny. It's even tinier. <laughs> I mean, it's it's tiny, and and I was like, wow, this is it. And when you look at it from the outside, you would have never guessed. Like, this is it. So you didn't get to check it out from the inside. No, but I mean, everything you could you could see it from the front window. Like, I walked up to the front of the window, did the whole, you know, put my hands over, looking. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. You know, we got another one. We got another one. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch. All right, so I found the thing that I ordered. Oh, here we go. So I'm going to show you. All right, here it is. So that's the side part. And you wear it like that. Was that an umbrella? No, that's a person. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it can see, it can actually, it connects onto the backpack that way. That's it opened up. It's pretty cool. I got an extra large one. I'm so you talking. ordered that and the backpack? I ordered that. I ordered... Um, let's see. What else did I order? Uh, band... 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 Bandoro. Band... I don't know how to say that. Bandero. Ben, that thing. Oh, wait. What's this? Maybe that's it. Bandoro... And no, I don't see that. Uh, but Bandoro, maybe it was a brand new thing it was coming out with. <laughs> I ordered a different cartridge. Let's see. Let's see what this pops up as. I think that's for your phone. No, that's for your wallet and stuff. So that opens up like that, and that goes on the front. And there's a band there. Cool. I'll show it to you when I when I get when everything comes in. I'll, I'll show you too because it's a little hard to do it here but yeah I mean they don't give you all the angles on it yeah and it, you don't get the size and all that from it so but that was cool that was the probably the one of the best things I got at that comic-con and uh and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it I am going to enjoy it I love that shit <laughs> <clears throat> you can ask my wife I'm a backpack full yeah I think you gotta sit you gotta Quite a few. I got backpacks for everything. Um, what else? Oh, did you hear that uh, Jason Gowan stole the original Iron Man suit? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. I've tried to call the police; they won't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried to turn them in yet, but 
you know, it, it's good. As long as he lets me try it on, I don't care. I couldn't believe the amount that it, I mean, yeah, I can't believe the amount that it goes for, that they valued it at. $320,000. Yeah. A real life version of the events in Spider-Man Homecoming, except the burglars got away. The LAPD has announced that they're launching an investigation to locate a stolen Iron Man costume that was worn by Robert Downey Jr. and used in the first Iron Man movie. The stolen suit is said to be worth $320,000. The timing of the disappearance of the suit comes at a time when Marvel Cinematic Universe is selling, celebrating 10 years of making highly successful films that started with Iron Man back in 2008, leading us to the recently released Infinity War. Wow. According to reports, the red and gold exoskeleton was the only thing to have been stolen from the storage facility which was reported as stolen earlier this week. Well, yeah, I mean, what else do you really want to get out of there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody, somebody is sitting on their couch right now <laughs> with Where that thing on. <laughs> watching us. <laughs> watching us going, yep, that's me, motherfuckers. <laughs> Funny Gowan. <laughs> oh, man. That is hilarious. I oh, mean, it sucks God. that it was stolen, but shit. I don't even think it's possibly in the country anymore. You don't think so? No. I think it's gone. Oh, my God. Because. Based on, <laughs> because I think so. <laughs> well, because I think since we're at a port and we tend to ship a lot of uh, stuff out, and that's one of the things you don't want to keep in your house, because <laughs> someone out here is going to say, hey, little Timmy has the, J the Iron Man costume in his living room. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I just can't see it being at somebody's house, you know, little Joe Schmo. It, it's it's at somebody's house that knows what they're doing. Yeah, you know, because yeah, whoever whoever risked to get in there had access to that to that location. Exactly, totally inside job. And they're gonna be like, if I get it, I'm gonna get. I need some money out of this. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, somebody got it for not 300000 but they paid for it. <laughs> All right, Galen, give it back. Exactly. Before Captain America kicks your ass again. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. So you finally got to see uh, uh, the Avengers movie. I did. Last and night. I... Finally. And? <sighs> I liked it. I did not love it. Um, I liked it. Why didn't you love it? Because I know the story from the comic books. And so, disclaimer, spoilers, just in case. Yeah, you people have had enough time to watch yeah, it. plenty of time. I was fucking, I, I was at the end of the line, so. <laughs> Maybe two that, weeks later. Fuck yeah. Um, so I know the story and I know... The, the basic, the, the idea behind why Thanos did it in the comics. Before you go on. Okay. Going back to the Rocky Stones. Are those actual stones or are those like plastic? Oh, they are real stones. Okay. They are right. real professionally made stones. All right. Um, and okay. if you go, if you go to Laurel Hill Cemetery, go to the main gate, that's where they are. Like there's a main gate that you can actually drive through and... But usually, it's easier to park across the street. So you park across the street, you walk over, and as you're walking through the gate, they are right there. You can see them. Oh, okay. That's not where they filmed them, but that's, that's but where there. they stay. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Okay. So back to Thanos. Back to, back to Thanos. So the idea is, from the comics, Thanos did this to impress death. The, the, the physical embodiment of death. Yes. Okay. So basically, it comes down to the dude was trying to impress a girl by wiping out half the universe. Yes. Okay. So they change the plot here. And well, of course. They yes, they make the idea that Thanos is his idea is that there is a limited amount of resources in the re universe, and that it's overpopulated. And it's just going to lead to extinction. 
So his idea is to get all six Infinity Stones, which gives you complete control over the universe, and wipe out half the people. My problem is that, based on that storyline, if you have complete control of the universe, you can double the resources in the universe, universe and therefore catch up to the population. Therefore, nobody has to die. You were going to say Unihor. I was. <laughs> so that, that's my big problem with the plot. Um, because mm -hmm. they changed the intention, it made no sense. Um, I there's, see. there's no reason to kill, or you can just, you can, you can, you can take everything back, you know, all the waste in, in the universe, everything that's wasted, the trash, the piles of trash, you can, you have the power, just, you know, go back and say, all right, let's break it down, put it in its original components, put it back in the ground, wherever planet you're from. There's, it, it was, it was just a silly idea. To me. I think it would, I think that would be too much to go that route. It'd be easier to just you know what kill you half and start all over. <laughs> it's the same thing. Hey, up. hey, you know what? Uh, double all the resources in the universe. There you go. Done. <laughs> Done. It, it's it was it was silly. Um, but that that's just for the plot. Yeah. Um, as for the characters, Thanos himself. If I if I suspend disbelief and just go with the flow, I think they made Thanos a actual likable character. I liked him. Yeah, I liked him too. I, I mean, I saw but... the emotion. I saw, like, I know our friend uh, Russ. He wrote a whole thing. He hated the movie. He absolutely hated the movie. <laughs> um, and he and he went off on a tangent. I. I I don't even want to touch how much he hated the movie, but <laughs> I, I I didn't agree with it. I, I think Thanos he showed that he had love for somebody, but his his determination after all he is the Mad Titan. Um, yes. So he's a little crazy. So his ambition to complete his goal outweighed his love for Gamora, which he did love. Yeah, his and, daughter. Yeah, and as he said... It made into porn movies. Oh, my God. I, I don't know... I don't know if, like, these just come naturally in your imagination or if you sit it up at night and think of these things to say. <laughs> That's totally off the wall. Um, but... Um, yeah, he, he does show emotion and love. He even said it in the film that he wasn't going to let this let love or, or um, emotion get in the way again. So uh, it sounds like he tried to do it once before, and he failed because he let these feelings get in the way. And yeah. as he sees it, he's, he's the good guy. And that's, that's the, I think, the beauty of his character, is that he thinks he's the good guy. But you know what's funny? You. Well, <laughs> what's funny is... Now you have now I'm rooting for Gamora's sister. Yes. Because she so, she was on she was a, she's an anti-hero too. Yeah. Yes. She's definitely an anti-hero. She's on the side with like Deadpool. Um <laughs> you know, she she starts out bad, but then you realize like okay, she's taking up this this quest. She wants to kill Thanos, and she's doing good. And she's even when she had the chance to kill Gamora in Guardians Two, she didn't. She, I mean, she could have. She really could have. She could have. But she didn't, and she she hesitated. And you know they, what the hell? All right, cyborg. So, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Visually, I think most of the effects were good, um, except there were uh, quite a few times when Thanos looked like when he walked. Anytime he walked, he looked silly. It was yeah. like, like he was taking baby steps. But you know what I liked about this is 
um, let's go back to the X Men movie where they made a uh, uh, what's his name? Shit, I can't remember his name. Apocalypse. Yes. Here, Thanos actually looked big, huge, like he should be. Whereas in Apocalypse, he kind of seemed like everybody else's size. Well, Apocalypse was a real guy. Yeah, but he's in the comics. They've made him bigger. Right. And this guy just—he just seemed. He, he just seemed like he was out of you know yeah. out of sync. Height there was there were times like I, I agree. He was big. He he looked big, and and most of the time he looked good. A lot of the close ups, looked good. It looked really really good. But it looked like there was, more than one company that was doing it because there were other times when it's like. That looks like a bad video game segment. Yes. You know, like he's walking and little little baby Gamora is taking bigger steps than he is. <laughs> and he's like supposed to be like 12 feet tall. Yeah. He should take big steps. You know, but even when he's not walking with a little girl, when he's walking by himself, he just looked like he was taking baby steps. And it, I think it looked silly. And I agree with you know, I completely agree with, but he looked good in this movie because that was one of the things I was afraid of because, you know, I kept going back to Apocalypse that, yeah. oh, you know, they're going to, he's going to look like one of those Power Ranger things and oh my God, he's going to no. be big and whatnot. No, he, and he was awesome. Yeah. I really enjoyed especially when he started going at it with Hulk. Yeah. That I, was like, oh, going to kick ass. That I thought should have gone on a little bit longer. I th I think he took out Hulk way too fast. I would have liked to seen Hulk take a, a a little bit more. You know, just showed a little bit more feros ferocity, um, and, and really go to town. But yeah, I, 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 see, I was kind of expecting the scene from Thor, where they went at it. Yeah, but to a certain extent, I. I agree with you, but at the same time, I understand why they went so fast because they're trying to say, "This guy is." Yes. Yeah. You know, but yeah, they could have gone a little bit longer on it. Just it a little. Just completely. Bit. Just a little. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. You know, give give Hulk a chance, and the whole thing about Hulk being afraid to come out was. Yeah. I. You know what? He he got beat by Stark in his in, in his Hulkbuster. You know, they they went at it and and he wasn't afraid after that. Um Thor pretty much won in Ragnarok. Yeah. He wasn't afraid to come out after that. But Thanos beats him and he's like, oh alright, no, I'm not coming out. Even though Thanos isn't around I'm still not going to come out. That was bullshit. <laughs> that was dumb. I did like his uh, his minions. Thanos minions? Oh, the... the... He had the woman. He oh, had that... yeah. His, his, the yeah, big his... tough dude and then the bald dude. Yeah. Which of those guys did you like the best of those three? I liked... I liked the... Um... Uh... Oh, shit. <clears throat> The one that was with the big, big motherfucker. The one that took oh. on everybody in the beginning. Um, when, when, oh, the, 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 I think he was bald, yeah. Yeah. And he took on Strange and Iron Man. Um, I think I liked him. The big guy was just a big, stupid guy. You know, he was just like a big, oh, I'm big and stupid and I, I got a big axe. I'm the muscle. <laughs> like a steampunk axe. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the the other girl and the other assassin guy that I they were okay. The girl one I didn't think she looked good. Like every time I saw her, I thought she looked like a video game. Um, yes, yeah, it was a little bit off with her, but yeah. I I got through it. I I enjoyed her, but I think um, out of mine, I I like the ball, the one who was I guess you know praise Thanos and he's here to yeah you know save you and I. But his death kind of irked me the same way that uh, the main dude in, in Star Wars, how he died. 
it just seemed too simple. Oh, getting wait, the bald guy getting blown out or Yeah, the bald yeah. <clears throat> I thought I took it the same way, like what's his name in Star Wars where the lightsaber cuts him through the yeah. middle and then it's over. And it's I was over. like and I was like, Yeah, and I was like, No, there should be more right there. There's so much more with that character that you could do. Yeah. And he just ended it like that. And, you know, so I love that character. I just thought his death was almost as meaningless as the guy from Star Wars. It's like, ah, you could have done so much more. Yeah. There's, there's more you could have done here. I did not like, um, like, oh, I'm, I am totally Team Iron Man, <clears throat> but I was upset with Stark. Um, really? I thought the whole idea of him saying, oh, let's take on Thanos head on. With, well, that's Stark's way of thinking. Yeah, but, but he's usually, he, he has everything thought out. You know, that's, that's the way his character is. But all he had was <clears throat> Spider-Man, who is still inexperienced, and he has Strange, who he really just met. Yeah. And him, and that's it. They hadn't met the Guardians yet. And he's planning on taking... He, he's, he's planning on taking Thanos on that he just heard Bruce Banner like freaking out saying this is the scariest motherfucker I've ever been across. <laughs> and he means business. He's the one behind the whole war that came to New York in the first Avengers and stuff. But Stark is like, hey, the two and a half of us here don't get me wrong, I like Spider-Man, but he's still young and inexperienced. The two and a half of them are going to take on the Titan. They don't even know what they're getting into. Well, if you think about it, he's actually out there with a pretty powerful superhero in Doctor Strange. But he doesn't know that. Doctor Strange. <clears throat> no, he doesn't know that. But I'm saying, but we know that. Yeah, we know and that. I think uh, Doctor Strange is still there. That's, yeah. an, that's but, another uh, thing Dr. we're going to get into. What? Yeah. <clears throat> Doctor Strange is still, uh, to a certain extent, I don't know. I still think he's kind of experienced <clears throat> also. Not completely, but I still, these are brand new powers to him as well. Yeah. So, you know, but what did you think? I didn't care for it. The the whole Spider-Man with the, I just don't care for the whole Spider-Man with the new kind of Iron Man suit. Spider-Man with the Dr. Octopus legs coming out from That's the back. That's Iron of Spider. I just didn't care for it. That's part of oh. the comics, and I mean, it's it's. I know people have been waiting for it. I think it's. I I didn't. I wasn't mad about it. I wasn't like, oh, what the fuck. I kind of <laughs> figured it was going to happen, um, because this is like, Stark at least has an idea. This is potential end of the world, shit. Let's give him everything we got. Let's 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 do this. But um. Well, remember, this goes back to what we talked about a few shows, well, more than a few shows, back where it seems Marvel is is turning everything into, you know, Tony Stark. Stark has his hands in all the superheroes in one way or another. Here, I'm going to give you this, un this suit. Here, I'm going to give you these wings. Here, I'm going to do... No, they were all their own personalities. They didn't need Stark. They, they need them for, you know, hey, we need to form a team. But here it just seems everything comes out. They're centering everything on Stark. You see I, where I'm going? I think because, well, that's how they kind of directed the MCU. So it's, it's Stark is the focal point. Stark Industries is the focal point. Well, yeah, but I mean. So he can supply the tech. Of, yeah, but I mean, for me, it's, I that's why I wasn't a fan of the whole Spider-Man suit because I'm like, yeah. oh, so now we're going to say he's, to a certain extent, making Spider-Man more than what he was on his own. He did, oh, you know. He's bringing him, in, he, he's, yeah. It's not, they're not taking their time as in, like, we've had decades of Peter Parker, you know, being the, the underdog, the, the student that is poor, lives with his aunt, you know, and... and is barely scraping by as a freelance photographer kind of shit. Yeah. But now in the movies, they've changed it where, yeah, Stark is pretty much his mentor and supplied him with this badass suit. And that's why I'm not a fan of that, you know, just because of that part. Oh, that's fair. I'm that's fair. Not a fan yeah. of it. I'm, you know, again, it, I think it goes back to being 
the uh, uh, a traditionalist. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm a traditionalist with the Fantastic Four, and I said that would bomb. Sure as hell, it bombed. You know. <laughs> Well, it, anybody could have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> that was just horrible. You know, but like I told people, it's not going to go up because there are people right. who are traditionalists. And and so I don't know. I think to me, that was the only issue I really had with the movie outside of, you know, everything else. Yeah. To me, that was probably my only main issue was, ah, just like, no, he's his own person. He doesn't need anybody else. So, right. but fine. I understand Hollywood is going to do it as long as they don't change the uniforms and make them into what they feel they should be like, like what they did in the 1980s with Thor and the 70s. Yeah. If you guys don't understand, look at what Iron Man looked like in a 1979 yes. superhero special. <laughs> That's you, horrible. So bad. It's a garbage can with big eyeballs. <laughs> uh, and then so, another issue I had was Doctor Strange. Um Watching Doctor Strange, the movie Doctor Strange, he he displayed how he could use the time stone. Yes. Yeah, you know, all right. He he showed that this big badass entity that was gonna destroy the entire planet he put him in a time loop. Yeah, in a, yeah, in a time loop. Okay. Just he could go back. back. He can control time. He already showed that he can go back and change things. So why didn't he do it here? Why didn't he do it? Yeah, exactly. And I thought the same thing. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> he's sitting there. He's, he's there, especially when they have Thanos. And they're almost, they almost get the glove off. Oh, and, and oh, yeah. Peter Quill does his stupid shit where he gets all pissed off and has to punch him in the face. And he's thinking yeah. about himself and not yes. about the, the rest of the team. He's being a, a selfish little bitch. Um, He's being Rocket Raccoon right there. Yes. Why didn't Doctor Strange turn back and tackle Peter Quill or or bind him? Or or tell him, you need to stick with us. You need to stop. We're almost doing this. We're going to keep doing this until we get it right. And put it in a time loop until they get it right. Yeah. But then again, the movie would have ended right there. We would have walked away and that was it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you know, and, and it's just, <sighs> yeah, I mean, that that was bad since he's supposed to be the smart one here, and yeah. I liked it, though. I mean, then when they went to Black Panther's home of Wakanda. Yeah. I liked it. I saw, you know what, I, I tried and tried and tried, but I could not get the thought of Star Wars Episode One out of my head. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, oh shit, they're lined up like the Gungans. <laughs> they have an energy shield like the Gungans. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the, the droid army is outside the shield like the gun <laughs> like in Star Wars. That's great. And they're they're crawling through the shield just like the droid army. Oh great. That spoiled that shit for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Right, there it goes. So, yeah, but now that you say that, now I'm always going to be thinking about that part. Um, I did like it. I, I definitely suspend my disbelief with the whole Thor story arc. <clears throat> um, yeah, being at 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 a a dead star, the <laughs> the core of a dead star, like you're you're no. You're not going to just float around that. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> but, you know, badass weapon, uh, the Stormbringer, Stormbreaker, right? Stormbringer? I forget what it was. Yep. Stormbreaker. Yeah, that was that was pretty badass. I didn't get the, uh, the whole, at the end, when he, you know, pretty much buries it in Thanos' chest, dead center. Big yeah. ass fucking axe, and it doesn't do anything. Well, I think by then, <clears throat> what's his name had already done the time loop, or he had just enough time to uh, go backwards. But we didn't see that. Like he did it for Vision. He brought that was that was kind of cool seeing the little <laughs> exploded pieces come back. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's wow. I did not think they were going to show that 
entire sequence. Okay. That's that's and, cool. I like and that. You thought, and, and when I saw that, I go, they got it. You know, they denied Thanos that final stone. And unlike Doctor Strange, he Thanos goes, no, we're going back in time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to, just him. <laughs> yeah, right here, just him. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and then, uh, and then Thor comes around and, and fucking, yeah, just buries it in his chest. But I didn't see any time thing. I didn't see any anything. He just, oh, you should have gone for the head. We're just going to have to go back and watch it again. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> again, I mean, we're picking it apart. But I, I did enjoy the movie. It wasn't like I, it was over and I was like, wow, that sucked. No, I, I liked you, it. Yeah, I mean... But I was like, so after the end of the movie, we were talking, there were people who didn't care for the movie after it was over because they go, oh my God, that's it? That's how this ends? <laughs> I was thinking, did you people not know that there's going to be a part two? Yeah. You know, and that there's still a bunch of other superheroes that didn't even make an appearance here that, yeah. more, that more than likely will make an appearance in the next one. And, and so we started naming them off. We're like, The Ant, Wasp, Hawkeye. And if they decide to make Hawkeye's wife, who she be, who she is supposed to be, which is Mockingbird, you could say four. Yeah. Then you have you know Captain Marvel, who's gonna come in. Who? Yeah. That they they show you that at the end. Yeah. You know, and that that as soon as it came up, and and the little little pager device is on the ground. They zoom in on it. I'm like, all right, wait, who? He's calling somebody. He's calling. Oh yeah, Captain yeah. Marvel. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. Because remember, her movie's coming out before the second part, if I'm Which correct. is, yeah, but it's set back in, like, the the 90s. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's her origin movie, which is cool. And then the Wasp and uh, the Ant-Man and Wasp have their next one coming this out before then, too. Yeah, yeah, that should be coming out. I think, I'm not sure. Um, so I'm guessing that's going to happen... Pre, pre uh, Infinity War. Yeah, but it makes you wonder: Are they going to bring somebody else into the theater or into the movie storyline that we don't even know about? Don't know. We'll see. I, I wonder who they would do. I don't. I don't know. If they did, if they did, let's just let's just go off the hitch. Okay. Who would you like them to bring in? You know, if if. If there was a surprise superhero coming up. Superman. <laughs> Marvel Universe. <laughs> Crossover, dude. Crossover. <laughs> How cool would that be? No, no crossover. No. Let hey, do a crossover, bring Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and let them do it right. <laughs> Cause the only way the DC is gonna have a good decent movie is if they let Marvel take over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad to say. Besides Wonder Woman. Because I think Wonder Woman is the only really good DC movie. Well, they're coming out with Aquaman too, I think. <sighs> yeah, well, honestly, that'll I'm be a... interesting because if <laughs> what can you do with Aquaman? Well, here's the reason why I think it'd be interesting. Okay, yeah, he talks to fish, but <laughs> his attitude with everybody throughout that movie, I love. I go, if he's gonna be a smartass like that, I'm. A tough smartass? I think I could watch that movie. That would be interesting. Yeah, um, if he's a smartass. But, again, it's got to be... Most of it's got to be underwater. Well, we'll see. He's useless above water. He really is. I mean, the whole, the whole Justice League... He's supposed to still be strong. He's above water. So? He's got to walk. Oh, well, Yeah. He's got to walk around. <laughs> he doesn't fly. He has an invisible jet that... that no, he that doesn't. No. Fly him just, in. <laughs> just stop. Just stop. No. But I, I want to see that. That would be interesting to me. But, no. Who would you pick in the Marvel Universe? Oh, my God. I... That I would want to see in the... In, in, in the Avengers movie, or... Yeah, the Avengers coming in. in. uh, Wow. Um, (laughs) I would like to see... Shit, there's so many. 
Yes, there are. But you can only pick one. Oh, heck, I'll even let you have two. Two. Two, two characters or teams? Does the team ca- count as one? Two characters. All right. You can make a team, but it has to be a team of two. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. Because, uh, I mean, we already have Spider-Man. I'd like to see Venom pop in. Okay. I think he would he would make an interesting dynamic. And Deadpool. <laughs> I thought about Deadpool. Add those two. And if, if I'm going to say an alternate would be Wolverine. You know, because I think uh, it's it's a shame that they could not have the X Men in there. That would be, I think, too much. Even could for you the imagine writing. that? The Avengers, uh, the X Men. Oh my God. I think for me, I know they 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 messed up on the second part, but if they could bring in Ghost Rider, ooh, I would like him because I've always been a fan of Ghost Rider. And the second one, because he's almost kind of useless during the day, but depends on what what new series they put him in, uh, Moon Knight. I was gonna say that. I used to collect his comics. I still collect them. I, but they keep changing his powers every time. So, cause those one where he's on during the day, he's a normal person, but at night, yeah, you know, he's Mister Beat Your Ass Down with these super god powers. That would that would be interesting. Yeah, I used to collect him. I I used to collect him a lot. Um, but he was one of those characters you were like, uh, you know. He's he's on the fringe. Like I like him, but he's not like a Spider Man or X Men. He's, he's or... like a a B actor, you could say. Yeah, yeah. Because there are B actors in the Marvel universe. But the other one that's coming out that I found interesting is they're gonna start produ- pr- production on unless they've already started Cloak and Dagger. Ooh, that would be nice. And I saw that, and I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be great. So yeah. I, don't, I, I think they're still too young to bring them into on board to this franchise. Yeah. I think Cloak and Dagger would be a good movie if they do that one correct. That would be cool. I mean, if they could do Doctor Strange right, they've got to be able to pull off a, a black guy with a little white girl. <laughs> Glad you said that. <laughs> I I think they made that movie already. Oh, my God. Black Mamba. Oh, shit. <laughs> Samuel Jackson and Christy Ricci. <laughs> Just we saw how that turned out. Stop talking. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. But did you hear they're making a movie, uh, a remake of that superhero between Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis? Broken? or Is it broken? Ah, it was... Uh, uh, was it broken? Is it? What's it called? Is it broken? I think so. So they're starting. They're starting to have talks about making a part two of that. Hmm. Broken. 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 No. Um. Shit. Shatner. I don't know. Bruce Willis movies. Let's see. Uh. Unbreakable. Unbreakable. That was it. Yes. That was, that was one of those weird superhero movies. But it was cool though because it, it was, was different. Yeah, it was different. More of a real life kind of grounded movie. Um, I like Bruce Willis anyway. So, pretty much anything he does, I like. So they're talking about that. Did you ever get to see that movie uh, that I told you about? Um, yes. The the video game like movie. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Uh, I found it on Netflix. <laughs> really? And I watched it like a couple nights after we talked about it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was. <laughs> Strange. Yes, it was. It was which is why I which is why I liked it. 
because we we referenced we referenced it because we were talking about Ready Player One. Yeah. So Ready Player One, I could accept because it was a virtual reality that they went into, and this and that. This was more of a semi-confusing movie. What's the name of it again? Um. Something something takes on. Oh shit. I forget. I totally forget. I'll get it right now. Uh, video. Uh, let's see. Movie. Let's see if Google can do this. Movie. Um, where boy has to fight. Blonde hair girlfriend. Boyfriends. <laughs> Blue hair. Fight. Ex. Boyfriends. The evil exes. Uh, let's see. Scott Pilgrim versus the world. There you go. That's it. <laughs> Google did it. <laughs> Thank you, Google. <laughs> cool. I liked it. And what's his name? Captain America's in there. Yes. Yes. I saw him. He plays an ex-boyfriend that's a dick. Um, <laughs> the movie star. Yeah. The movie star. Yeah. It was just... <laughs> It was just wacky. It was one of them where if you're just looking at a film, like, I laughed at a bunch of stuff, but then other stuff, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I don't I don't understand this. Uh, okay, I'll just keep watching to see what happens. I think it was going along the line of, you know, like Street Fighter and yeah. Mortal Kombat. And if you did, you know, so many hits, you win coins and bonuses. And But I liked it. I, I enjoyed that movie. Um, <laughs> I thought it was wacky, and I don't know if I enjoyed it or not. <laughs> I'm just I think confused. you enjoyed it because you don't hate it. I don't hate it, but I'm not sure if it was good or not. <laughs> it was just weird. I, I, it was a strange movie. <laughs> and I think if I was drunk, I'd probably like it better, but I was sober when I watched it, so not really sure. <laughs> Uh, so here's a thing you posted. We post? actually got a lot of comments on this. Mm -hmm. You asked people. Oh yeah. When traveling via auto or plane, what is your go-to snack? Somebody I don't know who said rum. I don't know who that. Yeah. Was. <laughs> that person should have been banned right off the bat. Whatever, <laughs> bitch. Combos. I like combos. I haven't had those in a while. They, they're good. Sour Patch Kids, ugh. Chex Mix, ugh. Chex. I like Chex every once in a while, but I can't eat those forever. Low-fat cheese, fresh fruits, sliced veggies, turkey jerky, small, low-fat. What? Ugh. We didn't say what we would eat. We just asked them what we They asked for other people, yeah. Goldfish, <laughs> corn nuts, orange slices, beef jerky. Beef jerky seems to be a, like, I think it's like, um, uh, what are, what are they? Not not granola bars, but kind of like protein snack bars. I usually take those with me. Uh -huh. uh, beef jerky, yes. Take a few packs of those, and uh, that's usually my uh, my go-to. And what was your? I mean, there was some in there that I absolutely love, you know. Um, but yeah, beef jerky for me is always okay. You have to come with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's good. Chex Mix, I am not a fan of. I like those, but I can only have so many of those before I'm like, okay, I'm done. You yeah, know, I so... usually pick out <laughs> certain things. <laughs> and, and oh wait, wait. Okay, I was thinking something else. Yeah, Chex Mix. I'm the same way with you. I I pick it out. Yeah. And usually, what I ended up doing is. I just end up buying a bag of pretzels or yeah. get the ones from the airline and that's it. I do the pretzel rods. I like those. I eat those yeah. at night when I'm when I'm usually working here. Um yeah, so that was interesting. So yeah, no, but the corn nuts, yeah, I can yeah. do corn nuts. Nah, what are corn nuts? Um, what? What? Everybody watching this just went, what? No, no, nah, not everybody. What are corn nuts? Are I have no sure? idea what that is. You've never had corn nuts. 
probably from my question of asking what are corn nuts probably should tell you that I have no idea what they are and I know I have never had corn nuts. I have never met anybody who said corn nuts. Let corn me nuts. see. What the fuck are these? That's weird. Corn nuts. So this is a brand name? Yeah, they have they come in different flavors and stuff. They you know they can be in pecani sauce, you know, pecani, they can be uh, lemon, they can be freaking anything. Barbecue. Crunchy corn snack. Are they like puff things? Are they No, they're, they're they're hard. You need to go buy when you go to to Wawa's today, because you probably go there today. They don't have them. Just, huh? I don't I'm pretty sure Wawa doesn't have them. They have to have corn nuts. Everybody carries corn nuts. Wait, Walmart has them. Wawa's has to have corn nuts. Corn nuts. What's what's this picture look like? They look like mutated nuts. <laughs> I can't believe you have never had corn nuts. Or much less you don't even know what they are. I don't know what they are. I don't I don't eat as much nuts as you do. <laughs> <laughs> Ranch barbecue. Well, there's flavors of nuts. When did this happen? Oh my god! Ranch That's what barbecue. I said. Everybody is like, what? I've never seen these. I don't think I've ever seen these. I might have seen them and just ignored them, but I, I cannot ignored. recall in recent memory having actually seen and or recognized this thing. Oh my god. I'm you need to go buy a bag. They only cost like a dollar. So alright, so they're they they sell them at Walmart, so when next time I'm at Walmart, I'm going to try them. Look for a flavor you're gonna like. I'm so, just gonna tell you off the bat. Don't get the what is it? I think it's the sour cream one or something like that. It's a light blue bag. Don't get the light blue bag. Let's see. I see barbecue chili. How do you say that? Chili picante? Picani. Picani. Original Picante. ranch and jalapeno cheddar. Keep away from the ranch. That's the one I was telling you about. Okay. The jalapeno, yeah, keep away from that one. It's not going to be too hot. I don't think so, but... I'm probably going to try the ranch because you said not to try it. I'm going to try it because I'll probably like that one. You might, but you know what? Try them and maybe get the original... Try the barbecue one. They look like just coated nuts. They're pretty good. All right. So that's my goal tomorrow. Yes. It's Well, actually, Walmart's open almost, I think it's 24 hours. I could probably go and get them after the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll get them tomorrow. It's just on my go list. In I need to know where your nuts are at. I am going to write it down. I'm writing it down right now. Corn... Nuts. I can't go. believe that. Corn nuts. It's on the list. I will get it tomorrow. Oh, my God. Whatever. I've never met anybody who said that. Well, now you have. Now I have. You're welcome. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be interesting to see <laughs> if you like them or if you don't. Uh, I'm going to, if they, what is this? Oh, it's $10 for a box. Oh, that's 24 I want to see how much they are, the little packs, and I'll just get one of each flavor, and I'll do a we live video. So, we should have you eat them here on the show. I will. I will. I'll do. I'll. I'll do it for the next show. Yeah, don't open them. Just keep them in the like next show. Okay, here's the corn nut test. Get all flavors. <laughs> all right. <laughs> for show. <laughs> there we go. We're good. And get water because you're gonna to have to swish after each one. <laughs> I have to swish. Gonna... I'm gonna get a <laughs> bottle of water and a bucket, <laughs> so I can be like, swish, swish, spit, <laughs> and we're good. Because the flavors can sometimes be overpowering of the other one. So. Okay. Oh my oh, goodness. We talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. Um. Rick Moranis. Oh Moranis. Yeah. There was a lot of rum in that cup. Rick Moranis 
is coming back to TV. Really? He is going to be on the Goldbergs, which is pretty much like, it's almost like a that 80s show. I thought he'd retired. He'd he been done did. with TV. He did, and he did a stint. Um, he did something not too long ago. Let's see. Let me see what the article says. If I can read it. <clears throat> yeah. ABC has released a clip from the next episode of The Goldbergs, airing May 9th. Oh, shit. That already aired. Preview, Not too late. Previewing Rick Moranis returning to his role from Spaceballs. He came out of retirement to provide the voice for Dark Helmet. And you can hear him talk about the Schwartz once again in the above clip shared by Yahoo. Oh, we gotta watch this. Oh, oh. We're it. watching it. Here we go. Hold on. Because this is, this is awesome. I this love is... Rick Moranis. Here we go. At Montgomeryville Nissan. Oh. Powerhouse. Fucking Nissan. Power. One price they are not, it's uh... Simple. With our real-time market value, they're not a, a sponsor. On every pre-owned vehicle up to the minute you walk in the door. Area. All your it is. Brands, like Nissan. Shut up, Nissan. Unless you pay us. Yeah, you're send not. Us, a, you're not send, another sponsor yet. Yeah, send us a check and then I'll turn the volume back on. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. What the? Here we go. Touch me. Take my hand, Adam F. Goldberg. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Dude, you're not my dad. Oh, yeah? Then explain this. No! That's impossible! I will never join you! <laughs> I see your Schwartz has grown. I'm in high school now. <laughs> I was a late bloomer myself. Now die. <laughs> What's this? Uh, nothing. Spaceballs 2. Oh, it's just a little script I'm noodling with. It's stupid. Actually, I'm super proud of it. Read it if you want. I don't care. You know what? I'd love to act it out for you. And so Pizza of the Hut says, Dark <laughs> Helmet wins the intergalactic ski race. And I'm like, you know it. Then all my subjects cheer. And the princess is like, kiss me already. And I do. <laughs> awesome. I give you my word. I will get this made. Oh, stop. Take my hand, Dark Helmet. Join me. And together, we can make this sequel. Oh, Ew. Snoopy's having a bad dream. No, this is my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> now I can talk ah, about my ah, life with my up. mutual friend. <clears throat> That's cool. Hey, I think one of us is offline. You think? Nope. We okay? Yeah, we're all right. What do you mean? Oh, okay. All right, the video seemed like it was off a little bit, but we're fine. Wow. Well, it's usually you, so. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that's that. Um, Bruce Campbell uh, has said goodbye to Ash of Evil Dead. He will no longer play the Ash. Yes. I'm kind of, I mean, I know a lot of people follow him. I, I love the Evil Dead series, um, the movies. And stuff, so it's sad to see him go, but who knows? He might be back. He might, you know, if the money, if he's in need of money, yeah, it'll come back, it'll definitely come back, yeah. So, uh, but I thought I saw, I don't know where I saw it, but it looks like he's gonna have a, or there's a woman who's gonna take up that part. Oh, really? I can't remember where I saw it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. A a woman taking becoming him. It would be interesting if it was like his daughter. I think it was his daughter. Oh, okay, good. But, but first, I, I don't remember where I saw it, and uh, I should have kept it. You should have, bitch. Fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Next um, time. 
Let's see. What happened oh, last weekend? Oh, should I do last weekend or should I do my Buffalo trip? I have both. Uh, Pick uh, one. Last weekend. What? Do last weekend. Last weekend, I was down in Harper's Ferry, uh, West yes. Virginia. Yes, I went down there because there was a, it was called um, Harper's Ferry Paranormal Gathering. It was run by Rebecca and Jeremy of the Antietam Paranormal Society. Because Harper's Ferry was a pretty violent battle towards the end of the Civil War. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Really? It's... I, thought they were, I thought they would have told you, hey, this is Harper's Ferry. You know, there was a huge engagement over here. Well, they told us, uh, Rebecca was telling us a little history about the the, uh, the building where everything was. Um, but <laughs> it, I really didn't know much history about it. It's a very, it's a quaint little area, I want to say. Uh, like, it's the type of area where they don't get visitors and like there's some areas of the neighborhood where just there's signs up saying residential parking only like you can't park anywhere back there and you have to go back and i had to use a phone app i had to download a phone app to pay for parking really? <laughs> along the side is of it, a road is it, panda? it wasn't panda okay it was it was a different one but um they had a gathering that was based off of it, it was pretty much based off the Gettysburg Paranormal Gathering that had yeah. been uh, the last couple of years. Um, it was small. It was the first time they were having this. Um, I don't think the the advertising for it was sufficient, but I think it was the first time they were doing it. So they were they were trying to get it out there, but I just don't think it made it out there as much as they wanted to because I didn't hear about it until Thursday. Mm. Um, which was uh, a friend of mine actually told me about it. He sent me a message. Mark Cook, um, the guy that did, he was one of the planners of the Gettysburg one. He sent me a message saying that they were going out and if I was interested. And I said, yeah. And then Friday, he sent me a message saying his wife had uh, gone, home, gone home sick and they were not going to make it. <laughs> I was like, shit. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? I'm already planning on going, so I'm going to go anyway. What the hell? What the hell? It was a three-hour drive, um, which wasn't too bad. Got down because there. I, You're, uh -huh. you, what? No, I wanted to go to Harper's Ferry, yeah. but it was just out of my way at that time. It's one of the places I planned to go to, but I thought, dude, I should have told you, hey, that's a Civil War battlefield. Yeah. You know? So, But I thought they would tell you that, you know, hey, welcome everybody to the you know, Harper's Ferry side of a, of a Union battle. There were no <laughs> markers. Well, there was one marker up. I took a picture of it and moved on. I don't remember what it said though. But, because uh, Harper's Ferry, going back to my to my Ghostbuster times, is supposed to be pretty haunted. Oh really? Yeah, because of everything that happened there during that battle. Okay. Um, it's supposed to be a really active location. Um, it's supposed almost like Gettysburg, active hmm. everywhere. So that's one of the places I wanted to go check out. But um, well, now you know. Next time you go, now I know. Next time I go, I'm gonna go next year. They plan on having it again next year, so I'll go down. Um, it was like I said, it was tiny, um, and the the organizers were great. I want to make that clear. They were great. They were friendly. They were very nice people. Um, there weren't many people that came out. Uh, the the vendors that were there, there were a couple. Like there were, there was a jewelry guy, uh, a jewelry woman that did it. Uh, uh, my friend Stacy, who runs like Urban Edge essential oils and stuff. Yeah. Even though I don't buy into the essential oils, she's very nice. I like her. <laughs> she was set up there. Um, there was a couple of paranormal teams. There was one that was there that I, I I have to say that I was very not impressed with because I walked up to the booth like three times and they totally ignored me. Did they know who you were? I don't think so. They just didn't engage. 
You know, so how did they ignore you? Give us some details. As in, they were behind the booth, and I walked up and stood at the front of the table. So my my body was four inches from the edge of their table, and I'm looking at their stuff on their table, which is a little bit of equipment, and then they had like bracelets and other stuff. And I looked at all of them, and none of them said anything to me. Like, they didn't say hi, they didn't say, hey, uh, what can, you know, do you want to know anything? Do you have any questions? Nothing. Did you have a shirt that said, Parasceptic? No. <laughs> no. My shirt said, oh, shit, what was it? I had, I had, um, oh, my God. What shirt did I have on? I have to look now. Because I had a, I had an orange shirt on. And hold on, let me see. Uh, da, da, da. And Harper's Harper's Ferry Pair. I know I took pictures, and I totally forget what I what I had on. It was a shirt that I made. Oh, it said "Never Stop Learning." That's Maybe you went naked. No, it said "Never Stop Learning." That's all. Which is not confrontational. It's not threatening. It's inviting i think yeah but yeah they didn't they didn't so i don't like them um <laughs> your your buddy steve coles was there yeah i saw a picture he was there and, but i saw it on his facebook page yeah and i was like i've never heard of bigfoot being seen at harper's ferry but yeah, you know, I go. Okay, maybe he's just there well he was there as part of a a f big bigger team so there was a big team called, and they called themselves the Extreme Paranormal Encounter Response Team, which the acronym is EXPERT. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you ran into those. Yeah. They did a panel discussion. Unfortunately, the, the ghost hunter of the group, his name is Jack Kenna. He did most of the talking, like 98% of the talking. Uh-huh. And I, I, it's been a while since I've sat in on a lecture that was just made me just dumbfounded with how much no science there was and how much assumption there was and how much repeating of the same old shit there was. <laughs> so tell us how you felt. <laughs> I thought it was a waste of time. Um, I've never seen that. You made a post on your Facebook, basically like rolling my eyes, I'm like, "Oh, yeah. this is great." Yeah, it was, it was a waste of time. It was completely a waste of time. Um, any questions that came up, there was not a logical thought in the place. Um, it was they went right to some kind of ghostly paranormal explanation for it or assumption for it. There was no logical explanation. There was no logic. There was no reason. There was nothing. Um, and, and it was just, I wrote notes, the whole thing, and I know I was writing like, what the fuck, <laughs> a few times, <laughs> like, you gotta be kidding me, um, like, talking so about, did, so did you ask anybody questions? I did not, um, because my purpose there was to observe, um, you kind of get, when I, when I attend these things now, you, you, and I'm sure you get it. You, you get this sense of the crowd, you know, and all right, are these just all believers? Is anybody asking questions? Um, is anybody asking good questions? What I would consider good questions. And there wasn't. Um, yeah, kind of like when I went to go see David Palivis, the guy who writes the 411 books. Yeah. And, you know, of course, he'll never say what he thinks is happening to these people. Anyway, so when he opened it up to everybody, hey, do you have questions? The first question was, do you think it's the reptilian people? Or are they <laughs> hiding in the mountains? And I was like, well, there goes that. There goes this forum because now all the crazies are going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> I, if he had said, do you think it's Bigfoot, I would have been oh, okay. But as soon as he went, I, isn't that weird? I would accept Bigfoot. But when, as soon as he said reptilian, I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> Ah, uh, so yeah, that's that's the way it went. 
Um, there were UFO guys there that I know, um, that I've met before, uh, Tom Conwell. I didn't stay for his, uh, his part of that lecture, uh -huh. um, just because I, I had enough of the other guy. <laughs> I needed to go outside. <laughs> I, I really needed to just go outside and just not listen to anything else. Um, <laughs> just find yourself again. Yeah. You're on the quest. <laughs> I, talked to, I talked to this ghost hunter guy again later, and I tried to talk to him, and it pretty much came down to... Um, You're a dick. <laughs> he's, he's trying... He, what I got from it, from talking to him, and it was hard talking to him because he... he Honestly, he didn't shut up. Um, he didn't give me a chance to talk, and the only time I could ask a question is I had to actually interrupt him, and I hate doing that. But he just went on and then went off topic. So he would start talking about things that had nothing to do with what I originally asked him for. So it was starting to piss me off that he was doing that. And I think, think he was doing that purposely. Purpose or... What? You think he was doing it on purpose? I think so. I, th I, I really got that impression that he didn't want me to ask questions. Um, but it really got to the point where I felt that he was not in it to solve mysteries or figure out what's going on. He was in it to appease the, the homeowner or client and just tell him, tell them it, it's, you know, whatever, what they wanted to hear. Um, mm. Because at one point I, I actually said, I was like, he asked me what what I thought investigations were for. And I was like, well, I investigate to solve mysteries. And well, I, I'm sorry, sir, but it doesn't sound like that's what you're doing. You know? It, it, yeah, I could see why he blew you off right <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was at the end. Because I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done talking to you because you're just giving me bullshit. Um, he's talking about the ghost box and that... He said something about, um, he knows it picks up radio stations, but he, um, if it makes sense to the questions that he's asking, then he considers it's, it, it's okay. And I was like, so you're, you're making a, you're differentiating, differentiating a legitimate response because it has, it sounds like it has something to do with what you're asking, even though it's still the same radio broadcasts. And then he went off on, well, you know, you got to keep an open mind and all that. It's like, no, no, no. Do you keep track of the radio stations that are playing? Because you can access them and, and see if, you know, that word was said at that time. And he's like, oh, that's, you know, that's too much work and, and this and that. I'm like, oh, there we go. It's too much work. So real investigation is too much work for you. Okay. So again, Kenny has made friends at another Paracon. You know what? <laughs> there are people that I don't mind talking to. Like when I talked to Rebecca and Jeremy, who run the place, we had a good discussion. We had a couple of good discussions. But somebody like this guy, this this Jack guy, I don't I don't give a shit if he if he likes me or not because he's just full of shit, and and he spreads pseudoscience, and that's what I really hate. He spreads misinformation, and it just makes the public dumber um, for it. So there you go. <laughs> I see you shaking your head like, oh crap. Here we go. I don't. I don't give a shit. You know, it's just. Oh, man. It, it was a waste of time going so to did that. You, did you talk to Steve Coles? I did. Um, I did for a little bit, and a uh, friendly conversation. Mm -hmm. And, and what was that guy's name, the one you were talking about right now? Jack. John? Jack. What? So I can see how your conversation went with Steve. Hey, Steve. Hi, Kenny. How you doing? Pretty good. I just talked to your friend. Who? Jack. Oh, what'd you think? He's a dick. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Gotta go. No, I Steve was actually you. sitting right next to him. <laughs> so he heard the whole thing. <laughs> Steve must have... Oh, here it comes. Somewhere along the way. You know what? That's That's... <laughs> Steve and I have a very, very roller coaster relationship. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, outside of all this, I like Steve. You know, I, I, I think he's, an, he's, a, he's a good guy. He's, he tries. Um, he's a good guy. But 
inside of this stuff this stuff i i unfortunately i don't take anything he says is credible um and it's just when I, when i was talking to his buddy here yeah he had his head down most of the time <laughs> and i almost laughed because i'm like it looks like he has that look like Oh shit! <laughs> Here he goes. Oh uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he informed him who you were after you left. I'm sure. I'm sure. But what is that? He's a dick. He's a dick. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That word's being said a lot today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. And and like I said, I was there to observe. I'm not really to um, any confrontation. I. I recorded my notes i have pages of notes that i took and i recorded everything on a, my little digital recorder and i i keep track of it now so well good that's it now, we, now when somebody causes you harm we know we can just tell the cops look at his notes and yeah. tell you who he spoke to look at my and notes then, and you'll be able to figure out what's going on you'll be able to figure out who did them yeah <laughs> <laughs> um what else is there? Uh, well, so there's that one convention that I brought up, that, you know, on our on Geeks and Coast, that I was supposed to introduce the, the again, the scientist from uh, Christopher, is that Christopher Lloyd? Christopher no? Lloyd. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that whole thing canceled. And people weren't happy about it, you know, because they canceled literally the, the night before the event. So. What? Yeah, that sucks, dude. Because you know so, people are already like, people probably booked hotels and shit. Well, the good thing is, there and they from what I and I followed up with some others. It seems that uh, they said, you know, sorry, we're gonna cancel. We're gonna reimburse you, and it okay. seems they've kept their word. They reimbursed the people, you know, for that. Okay. So, not all cons are are crap. Yeah. Some are, but Some are. not this one. Like, but not all. Um, but that sucked because I was gonna I was gonna go in there and get my get one of those Funko things and have it autographed by him for you. Aww. So when I see you, I say, hey, here's a here's a gift for you, and that kind of pissed me off that I couldn't do that because I was really looking forward to doing that. <laughs> well, but they said next year. Next oh, year, yeah, yeah, next year. It's always next year. No. Damn it. Fuckers. Uh, did I tell Did I tell you last time about my trip to New York? I don't think I did. I don't think we've had a show since then. Uh, I don't think we've put it on there. I went up to New York, to Buffalo. I, uh, I had a chance to sit in at the offices of the Center for Inquiry. Oh! Which put well, out... Well, we talked about it, but yeah. we didn't. Uh... Wait, you're all out of sync again. You're out of sync. You're out of sync. You're in the sink. See? All right. I'm calling you back. It's bad. <laughs> Call me back. Bitch. I think I know what the problem is. You. Well, I know why. Why? For some reason, whenever I click on our page, Geeks and Ghosts, to look at, you know, somebody put a comment on there or whatever. Yeah. For some reason, while it starts doing its whole little, let me think about it. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. All right. And so, I won't be doing that no more. All right. So, I went up to Buffalo, New York. That is a good picture of you and me and, and Margot Kidder. It is. It is. It's really good. Um. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Went up and I uh, actually uh, I got to work with Joe Nickel a little bit, a um, couple days. Actually, we worked on some projects together, and uh, I had a good time. Um, those people are really cool. They're fun-loving people, very friendly. They opened everything up to me. Um, there is a, they have a library on site that is phenomenal. Oh. Phenomenal. 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 We went down, I got a tour, and um, what the librarian, 
uh, Tim, Tim Binga. I hope I say his name right. Binga. He was awesome. He came down and showed me everywhere, er, everything down there. There's actually like, I would say there's two libraries at the offices. It's the and English library and the that's, Spanish library. That's, you go in the, in the offices and you go downstairs and there's two libraries, two big, big ass rooms. Um, one room is pretty much uh, collections from different people, like their entire collections. So when they passed away, their collections were donated to the Center for Inquiry. Um, the main room of the library has a rare book section, which is a, one big room. And, uh, like, first editions, books from, like, the birth of spiritualism, when that was big at the height, tons of books that I have heard about but never seen before. So are there books, like, from the late, you know, let's say 1898 and 1910 and stuff like that in there? Even earlier. Ooh. Um, there's, I got permission, it was really cool. I talked to them and, and said, you know what, I'm going to spend... Like Friday morning, all morning, I, I just stayed down there. I was like, I'm going to spend the whole morning down here and I'm going to look at everything. What can I not touch so I don't break anything? And <laughs> I was specifically told there is one shelf that you will see that looks like everything's falling apart. Don't touch those books. And Did you look at those books? I looked at them. I looked. I didn't touch them. I did not, I might have gone like that, <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't touch them, I didn't take them down, because, yeah, they, they did look like they were extremely fragile. And How old were, were those books? I don't know, because I didn't take them off. What um, did you think they looked like? I would say easily, like, early 1800s, easily. Really? Um, but, but like, uh, books... Um, from like D.D. Holmes, D.D. Humes um, was a, was a uh, a spirit like guide and and stuff. But they had books from spiritualism. They had Houdini stuff. They they had early skepticism and free thinking stuff. It, it's literally the largest collection of not only skeptical but paranormal. And when I say paranormal, like the wide net of paranormal, like anything that had to do with spirits and religion and ghosts and UFOs and Bigfoot and cryptids, everything. So here's a question. Sure. Let's say one day you get employed there. Let's say they, Kenny, you're going to work here and you work there. I'm going to go back to those old books. Are you going to ask them, can I now look at these books? I can look at, oh, oh that shelf? Yeah. Probably not. But are you going to ask somebody, can you get me one of those just so I can see what's in here? I would probably have to sit with Tim and let him go through them because he's he's a professional librarian. I mean, he's because the one I know that, those I know books that, that old, after all, they were made out of parchment, and they don't go well with our oil, our natural oils in our fingers. Yeah, it would definitely be a white glove uh, experience, um, but I would not... I, I respect the the books in the library and enough that I would be fine with him if if he could take it down and page through it for me. Beautiful, I'm fine with that. Whatever he, whatever he instructs me to do, I will do. Um, but it was just really cool. I spent the entire morning, and it was one of those where I was like, I, I would take a book from the shelf that I could touch. And start going through it going, wow, I've heard about this book. This is awesome. This is awesome. Wow. Oh, wait, look at that book. Oh, my God. <laughs> Take it down. Start looking through it. Oh, my God, look at that book. Holy shit. I, have, I, I know I have at least 500 pictures on my phone that I took of pages and pages of stuff. Um, there's a whole room dedicated to Steve Allen. Um, he's the guy that... Uh, he started the Tonight Show, mm. um, so it was it was called uh, Tonight with Steve Allen, and that guy had binders and binders and binders of every time he saw an article in a newspaper or magazine that 
had to do with science or politics or biology or whatever that interested him, he would photocopy it. And then on the top of the photocopy, he would type in those ancient things called typewriters. He would type <laughs> the name of the publication and the date. And then he kept it in custom made binders. And there's an entire room. There's probably like 500 volumes of just his stuff. Wow. It was really cool. Um, if you're a bookworm like me, you, you would be. Well, there's that one book that I was saying that when you go back in there next time, it's the one that deals with uh, Edison. Yes. You yeah, know, you're the whole about deal that, yeah. with, you know, talking to the dead or talking with the dead, the whole phone. And they said that in his in the first book before they re, re, retracted it and then redid a second version. But in that first edition, it says that, again, that either he, was, he built one or he was working on one. I can't remember exactly. It's been a while. But they said that the family one day, they went back and took that section out. And that's why there was a second edition release because that one part was taken out of the book. So if you go back... I suggest you look for that book and say, hey, this is what's here. So it looks, I think it's called The Diary and Sundry of Observations of Thomas Alva Edison. And it's in that that there was a chapter on... Um, Talking to the Dead. No. No. Um, let's see. In case you're not familiar, there was a book published posthumously by uh, Dagobert Runes that combined various diary, diary entries, interviews, and articles penned by or written in concert with Thomas Edison. The first and original publication consisted of eight full chapters, with the last chapter named as 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, The Realms Beyond. This chapter was strictly dedicated to Edison's views of the soul and the afterlife. It is well documented that Edison was an active spiritualist until he met his last wife, Mina, and was seeking to develop a device to communicate with the beyond. That's not true. Um, there are some who seek to discredit this by saying that the interviews he gave regarding his spirituality were a grand joke. They were. Um, but that is circumspect at best since there is no evidence to back up that speculation. There is, however, ample ev evidence given by Edison as to his spiritual inklings. He demonstrated a device. No, he didn't. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Regardless of what you believe about Edison and his spiritual studies, his surviving family was mortified when the diary of and sundry ob observations of Thomas Edison was first published in 1948. They demanded that the unshipped copies be destroyed and that the shipped books be recalled because of Chapter 8. There was a subsequent version of the book published the same year with over 70 fewer pages that struck Chapters 8 um, and Chapter 9. Oh, wait, no, Chapter 7 and Chapter 8 entirely from the book. So that's the book that I'm looking for. Well, now, that's the book that you're not going to be looking for. That's the book. Well, the first edition I'm going to be looking yeah. for. I've tried looking for that first edition, and when I have found it, people are asking ridiculous amounts of money for it. Um, so, if you can get at it, and it's right there, well, let's find out. Oh, well, here. There's a free PDF of it. This guy, he, he says he has both versions of the book. Um, he, he says, I quote, I have both versions of the book in my possession. Now that Edison's spiritual infatuation is seeing some new press due to recent publication, I have scanned the lost chapter on spiritualism from the Edison book for you to read and is not currently available anywhere on the Internet. Ooh, I never saw that. If you can find the original, I recommend buying it. Buying it. Make sure you buy the version with 247 pages. That is the only version that contains chapter 8. And there's a link. So let me see what the link is. Oh, there it is. I'm going to post this link on our page. 
You should do it on both Geeks and Ghosts and Kenny Bill. Let me see. I want to read through it first. 247, 244. Here's the index. And. Spirit communication. Hmm. This is interesting. I want to read this now. Yeah, now I'm interested because I've been looking for that book probably in over close to seven years now. Who has? Oh my god. On on a, on a great note, I got to see the Elephant Man movie last night. A, a what note? On a good note, I got to see the Elephant movie last month. The Elephant, elephant movie. Elephant movie last night. The Elephant movie. The Elephant Man. Elephant Man. The original? Yeah, from, with uh, 1980. Oh. It's on, I don't know if you have Amazon Prime. I do. It's there. Okay. And it was really enjoyable. I, I I I don't think I've ever been to actually sat down and watch the whole movie straight. Uh, not that I can remember anyway, but watching it last night, I really enjoyed it. Cool. All right, so there I post. I just posted the link Ooh. on our page, so you can look at it. And then anybody else that's watching this, you want to, you can go to our uh, Facebook page, and it's called the Redacted Chapter from the Diary and Sundry Observations of Thomas. Alva Edison. So go ahead. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to inter interrupt. Bitch. Interrupt what? What you were talking about? I already done. Okay. Ooh, it's talking. <laughs> this talks about spiritualism and communication. Let's see. What's he say on communication with the dead? Spirit communication. I cannot conceive. Do you want me to read this, Dan? I don't know if I can. Because yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I cannot conceive of such a thing as a spirit. Imagine something that has no weight, no material form, no mass. In a word, imagine nothing. I cannot be a party to the belief that spirits exist and can be seen under certain circumstances and can be made to tilt tables and wrap chairs and do other things of a similar and unimportant nature. The whole thing is so absurd. Doesn't sound like he's into this. <laughs> Uh-oh. Wait, maybe he will. Just keep reading. <laughs> I have been thinking for some time of a machine or apparatus which could be operated by personalities which have passed on to another existence or sphere. Now follow me carefully. I don't claim that our personalities pass on to another existence or sphere. I don't claim anything because I don't know anything about the subject. For that matter, no human being knows. But I do claim that it is possible to construct an apparatus which will be so delicate that if there are personalities in existence, in another existence or sphere who wish to get in touch with us in this existence or sphere, this apparatus will at least give them a better opportunity to express themselves than the tilting tables and wraps and Ouija boards and mediums and the other crude methods now purported to be the only means of communication. So what I get from that is he thinks everything at the time, psychics, table tipping, Ouija boards, is bullshit. He doesn't think the other side exists, yet he thinks he can, <laughs> there could be a machine that could hear what he doesn't know anything about. Okay. Interesting. In truth, it is the crudeness of the present method is, methods that make me doubt the authenticity of purported communications with deceased persons. Why should personalities in another existence or sphere waste their time working a little triangular piece of wood over a board with certain lettering on it? Why should such personalities play pranks with a table? The whole business seems so childish to me that I frankly cannot give it my serious consideration. I believe this that... Is like, wait, it's Thomas Edison. This uh -huh. is Thomas Edison, yeah. I was thinking Albert Edison. 
his unknown brother. <laughs> just, just shut unknown. up. <laughs> I believe that if we were, we are to make any real progress in psychic investigation, we must do it with scientific apparatus and in a scientific manner, just as we do in medicine, electricity, chemistry, and other fields. It goes on. It goes on for a couple pages now. I'm gonna have to read that when I get back. Yeah. This is intru- I'm going to read this after the show. Because this is the first time I've seen this. It's interesting. And now I'm going to have to look for this book. Damn it. There goes all my spectrum. Aren't you glad money. that I still kind of keep contact? I hate you. <laughs> Alright. Um, what else? What else we got? We got hour 13, hour 37. So we're getting close to our time limit. Yep. One second here. No one second here. Whatever. What do you got coming up? Uh, You tell us first. I'm trying to finish this right here. Okay. I want to show you this. Look. This is my poker chip. Yeah, you showed us all. I showed you. I showed you that earlier, yeah, before the yeah. show. <laughs> it's my poker chip. I have various colors. How many did you order, Kenny? Um, I ordered a whole bunch. This is one pile. <laughs> and I have a couple other piles. But these are not things I'm going to give out to everybody. Um, these are more like special little tokens that, you know, if I really want somebody, if I'm really interested in something and... and you know, I hit it off with somebody that I wanted. To... What did the family have his book again? They had it. Re- they had it redacted. No. The family had it redacted. Well, according to the one website, this is not. I, I I wouldn't put too much into this. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, according to one website, where this guy has both versions of the book, according to him, he said that the family was outraged. Um. That this this chapter was included, and they wanted it taken out. What are you doing? I'm typing. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. Oh, bitch. Um. All right. So what do I have coming up? I actually have um, this weekend coming up. Um, I'm going to the Para Unity Conference. It's in New Jersey. And my buddy, our buddy, he's been on the show before, Tim Vickers, is coming up. Vickers. Yes. Tim is actually flying up Friday. Um, Does he live in PA? He lives in West Virginia. Oh. Oh, in the Hokey Land. Yes. He lives pretty far in West Virginia. So he uh, he's flying up. He's going to be here Friday afternoon. And we're going to hang out. Friday night, he's crashing here for the night, and then Saturday we have a full day. We are going to the Power Unity Conference. We're gonna awesome. check out some things there, cause some trouble, and then we have a we have an investigation at a secret location. I know that location. We're not gonna say that location. That location is Disneyland. Okay, uh, but this location because I don't want anybody coming out. Um, and ruining our, uh, our our night. But the location is really cool. They are allowing us total access, and we can do pretty much whatever we want. Um, the only person invited to go is he who shall not be named. Whatever. That will <laughs> never, ever happen. <laughs> Douchebag. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been talking to Tim over the last uh, couple of weeks, and we have some ideas. We have some science that we're going to do. Uh, part of which was my, my battery bomb thing that you <laughs> so aptly <laughs> described. Um, I can actually tell you about that. That's that's an experiment that I learned from Ben Radford. Oh, I thought you were going to say ISIS. No, no. That would be you. Um, <laughs> and basically the idea is that, you know how you, you hear Ghost Hunter say, well, you know, I put new batteries in it and all of a sudden they're drained. You know, yes, I used to do that too. Yes. So, the I idea, think you did too at one time. The idea here is that I'm going, I have four sets of batteries. So, each pack has three batteries in it D batteries. 
Uh, I taped them all together. I numbered them. I've measured each one for the voltage and I've recorded the voltage um, and the temperature. I'm going to do the same thing as soon as we get there. I'm actually going to do it in the morning, Saturday morning, and then when we get there, I'm going to measure them again. And then two of them will be placed in the most active areas, according to the stories of the mansion um, that we're going to be in. And the what bathroom. I, of course. Because that's because where all the action happens. Everything happens in the bathroom. <laughs> bedroom. Um, and then two of the packs are actually going to stay. One is going to stay here. And I'm going to take the other one to another control location that has nothing to do with ghosts or spooks or anything like that. Um, and then we're going to go through the whole night. And then I'm going to, I'm going to measure them the day after and see if there's any drain. Um, and that's just a basic test. Uh, I know other people have done it. Uh, ben Rafford has, has done it at, a, a, at least one location that he's written about. Um, and I know a couple other people have done it. So I'm going to compare results to them. I'm going to actually reach out to other people that I know I know of have done it. So I'm going to reach you out to them. Too bad you can't get your hands on a Polaroid camera. I have one. You had one? I have one. All right. Look. It's the new one. Yeah. Rainy has that kind. Yeah. So, supposedly, you maybe want to try it. I don't know if you want to. But there was a guy a few years back, and you might be able to find him, where he could take pictures with the Polaroid and supposedly get better pictures of ghosts, or the ghost would imprint some kind of message on the film. Ah, yes. I know. <laughs> I know that guy. Yes. That was a, a psychic trick that uh, the guy would do. He had a... Uh, he had filmed that he had already done, and it was it was a magician's trick, uh, wow. sleight of hand, bullshit. <laughs> right. But yeah, I mean, I have this. I got this because um, the Dear David um, bullshit that was on Twitter a no. while ago. There was a guy that was he he started writing all these tweets about um, a ghost that was supposed to be in his apartment, and he called him David, and then he got on this. Uh, it was like a blog story. It was like a story, a storytelling blog type site that yeah. his tweets would go on to. And he called it Dear David. And he began writing about like experiences and, you know, he's freaking out. And then he started, he bought one of these cameras and started taking pictures. And that's, that's when it went downhill because... Um, he was posting they, videos of him taking pictures and then the results of the pictures. And I wrote an article about it because I, I was picking out details. The guy was like, he put tape over the flash, over half the flash in order to create a certain effect. Of course he did. And the dumbass was, uh, he didn't realize certain angles and stuff that he was doing when he was filming. And I was able to see the tape. Um, and I took screen caps, pointed out the tape <laughs> and pointed out exactly what the effects that he was doing with it. Um, I wrote a, a, a big article on it, on his, uh, shenanigans. Did we get back to you? No, he stopped doing it. Um, apparently was... he worked for Reddit, um, and that he was writing stuff for Reddit and they have a policy that. Any anything created while you work with them is owned by Reddit. I've heard um, of stuff like that before. And so apparently he quit. And when he quit, he could not write about his ghost story anymore because it was not his property. <laughs> and the story stopped, like dead, like cold turkey stopped. And uh, <laughs> people that were following him, which he he grew a big following because of it. Um, they were pissed off. Like, where's the story? Where's the updates? What's where's going on? All fake. Wow. He has not said one word about it. Since. Since, since. yeah. Well, it's not his concept to talk about. Right. 
Because he made it up. Unless he makes up a new ghost. Well, there you go. Call it Dear Lou. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so that's my so weekend coming up. That's that's. Wait, let me check and see what else I got. Um, that's that's this weekend. And let's see that. Um, and then next weekend, Donna has a craft show. And then two weeks, three weeks from now, we will both be in Louisville. Yes. Um, at the annual pig roast, where we will be drinking, having a good time, and not eating any Rice Krispie treats <laughs> whatsoever. No, no. <laughs> we will avoid them. I think we should put up a sign. That says no Rice Krispie treats allowed. I've I've already spoken to Ron, and I told Ron asked me about that, and I go look, if you're not frying it, I'm not eating it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's but, that's that's the go-to. If he ain't frying it, yeah, I'm not eating it. And Batman can fucking cook, cause the food is phenomenal. Yes, I mean. Did you see the little picture I made for his pig roast? No. I put it when I was going back over saying, hey, I'm going back to Louisville. Okay. It's a picture of a pig with, and then I edited some stuff in it and put him in. So. Nice. Yeah, how that man doesn't have his own festival, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's what it is, dude. This festival is so awesome. And it's one of those invitation only. You have to be invited to show up. And yeah. once you invite, once you're invited, you you have a lifelong invitation, unless you Forever. really fuck up. I mean, I don't know anyone that's been kicked out, but the man cooks a ton of food. Yeah, a ton of food, and it's just amazing, amazing. I eat, and I drink, and I eat, and I drink. That's the only place that I've ever tried, or will ever try. Frog legs. Yes. I, you I, know what? I've had them before. I had them before that, and I was like, ugh. But we've had frog legs there. We've had alligator. Gator? Yeah. Alligator. I don't give a shit what it is. That man cooks it, I will eat it. <laughs> and um, in regards to those, and the only reason I tried the frog legs because I was, I was drinking <laughs> so it took away all my inhibitions because I told I even told Ron, had I not been drinking, ain't no way I'd be trying these. Ain't no way. Because <laughs> it wasn't Ron, just it, it wasn't just like one leg. You had the whole bottom half of the frog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, I mean, and if I'm gonna try those again, I need to be drinking something because I know. Yeah. So. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. But I'm staying there till Monday. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm le I'll be leaving here Thursday, and I'm not leaving till Monday of the following week. Damn. So. It gives me some time to go visit some other friends. I think, visit. yeah, Monday's our traveling day. Um, I took off, but that's like our... That's our 10 hour drive home. Yeah. So we're going to do the whole recovery thing back at Ron's because you go back on Sunday and you kind of just chill. They make the, what is it, burgoo, right? Burgoo. Yeah. And it's just like a stew that's, it's, I don't know what's in it. I don't care. I don't want to know. But we just go there, we sit, we chill, we drink a little bit, we have this stew. And then it's it's good. It's good. It's a good time. Yeah. We get to see good friends and just and just chill and have a great time and forget everything. Um, so I'm really yep. Yep. looking yep. forward so to it. Outside of that, I got that going. I know I got a camp. I got, I'm going camping this weekend. Um, what else? I think after that... There's, I think there's a gap in between, and then uh, of course Louisville, 
And then after that, I think there's three more weeks of nothing, and then it's off to Cancun for 10 days. Nice. So, Whew. we'll see what happens, you know, uh, if, I got... if somebody builds a wall or not. Um, I got, like, a bunch of stuff coming up. It's not a lot of things I can actually mention, because some of it's just personal family stuff, and then other stuff is just stuff that I don't want people knowing that I'm going to until I'm there. Um, suckers. <laughs> and then uh, July, beginning of July, is our buddy Gowan, uh, Gowan is getting married. Yeah, him and I go back and forth on that. I'm going, uh, we're, we're going, and I'm also in charge of streaming it. So I will have his phone, and I will be streaming it live on Facebook. Oh, then I'll be watching it. Yes. Because we've been going back and forth on as to whose fault it is that my trip and his wedding date happen to fall on the same you know, weekend. Oh, you know he planned it that way. <laughs> yeah, he says, oh, it's my wife, it's my, it's my fiance's parents. I go, no, that's you. And he's <laughs> like, no, it's on her. And I go, you could have waited the week after, and then I could have gone. <laughs> yeah, because everybody waits for a low. <laughs> well, hey. So, whatever but I but because when he told me I go don't tell me you're doing it in the beginning of July and he goes yeah yeah I'm lying. and I go because I won't be here <laughs> and then I told him and so we've been going back and forth and <laughs> uh, what else so I told him just I told him you know what just don't do it don't show up yeah right I'll show to the Dude, I am looking forward to this. I am seriously giving consideration of actually packing my ATST costume in the in the truck and taking it and just walking up on the beach <laughs> with it. Because <laughs> I know he would be so excited. Yeah. Who else could say they had an ATST show up at their wedding? Exactly. So, but I don't know if you want to do that because that's just a lot of luggage yeah, around. I know. I know, and it's fucking heavy. <laughs> um, <laughs> going to, going way ahead, it's September. September 15th, if you're in the Philadelphia area, we have a, there's a skeptical or organization called FACT, um, and it meets down, usually at Drexel University, and they do lectures every month. And uh -huh. a friend of mine, Rob Palmer, um, not the singer, uh, he is going to be giving a talk about guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia, um, mm. he's part of a team um, that's that's run by Susan Gerbeck, uh, and they they actively look at Wikipedia pages for prominent figures, and they edit them to make sure that the information is correct, and then there's as much uh, references and information as possible um, for them. So they're a really good organization. I, I love them, and. Uh, Rob's a good guy, so I'm going to be there talking to him, and then, oh, September 29th is the Paranormal Journeys Expo at White Hill Mansion with your friend John Fowler. Yes. That's going on then. Um, oh, oh, October, wait, no, September 30th? And October 1st, wait, no, October, what the fuck? What Make is this? up your mind! I'm trying to look. Oh, you know what? I had it messed up. Oct September 29th, which is the Paranormal Journeys Expo that I'll be at, and October, no, September 30th. So We're September, skip I want to start people. over again. <laughs> September 29th and September 30th. It is a Saturday and Sunday. It is a Ouija con. Um, I don't know where, but it's a Ouija con. I think it's down in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, it's in Baltimore because the uh, I, Robert Merch, I think, is the guy that has the Ouija museum, and yeah. he, I think, he does this. But it's a Ouija con. It's a whole conference about Ouija boards Didn't and stuff like to that. Get him once? Yeah, yeah. I gotta work on that, but I, that's that's taking place, and we actually we have it scheduled that uh, Don and I are gonna go. Um, so we're gonna check that out. And what else? 
There is October. Oh, this is what I'm excited for. October 18th to the 21st is PsyCon. Oh, the, that's right. The conference, the Science and Skepticism Conference for the Center for Inquiry, the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, and I will be hosting, co-hosting, because I can I can say it now. I don't think I said it last time, because it wasn't announced. No. I am co-hosting a workshop Thursday morning, actually Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock, um, with Joe Nickel. So we are doing a workshop together, and it's going to be about investigating mysteries. Um, we're going to talk about some of the mysteries that we've actually been able to solve. So not just investigating haunted places, but places that we've actually gone in, investigated, and came up with a, a final conclusion. We were able to actually answer the question of what's going on and some of the out-of-box thinking that went into it. Like That would be one I'd like to watch. I think so, too. Um, when, the, when they came to me, Barry Carr, who runs um, the Buffalo office, um, he asked me if I wanted to do this. And I was like, this is a great opportunity because there's some, there's some freaky shit that I did to figure out <laughs> what was going on at some places and I think it's really amazing showing people that you cannot investigate every case the same way um, it definitely takes some different kind of things different thinking um, did you ever watch House? yeah I'll watch it okay do you know when he had like he goes through the show they're trying to figure out what's going on with a patient and then yeah. one of the, the supporting characters says something and then House kind of looks at the camera and he's like, that's it. That's it. And he has an epiphany and he just goes off. That's kind of shit that happens. I'll be talking to somebody and I might be talking about the, the case I'm working on or talking about something else. And they say something and all of a sudden, oh shit, I have to go look. Because you just said something like one word or two words that clicked. And now I have to look this up. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that we're going to talk about. Well, cool. Um, and, and I think it'll be interesting. I'm really hoping that a lot of people show up because I'll be really sad and disappointed and cry if no one shows up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really will, <laughs> but I'll be out in Vegas. That's in Las Vegas, uh, for, for that week. So I'll be out there for that conference and I'm looking forward to it. That'll work. And so. Now we get to our point of our sponsors. Oh, shit. So, who, are, so who are our sponsors? So the first one is John Fowler. John Fowler. Good. Your turn. Can you name them all? No, you, you name them all. I've named them all before. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Go back to the archive. <laughs> the, the archive? What's yeah, an chive. archive? <laughs> Chives, you know, put in your food. <laughs> Just, I didn't know we had an archive. Yeah, we do. Holy shit. That's awesome. Um, co uh, Color World. Yes. Uh, Blue Ghost Marketing. Yes. Um, we have, who else? Uh, BJ Hodges. BJ Hodges. With Blue Ghost Ghost Chasers. We have Devil's Playground with our friend Dax Christopher. We have to uh, uh, always have to say thank you to S.H.I.E.L.D., Yes. Whoever you may be. Yes. Um, movie buff game. Justin, who was awesome. Uh, we have to thank, uh, oh, Ice Pick from Paranormal <laughs> Skeptic Academy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and uh, finally, or so, or so the story goes. Those awesome people that make their own uh, uh, web series. Um, they do a great job. So that's right. There you go. And uh, Captain Morgan tonight. Captain Morgan. Yes. And also, you know, before we go, our condolences to the family of Margot Kidder. Yes. And also, one of our early guests. I just found out he lost his mom today. You know, Francisco. He came on to help us yeah. at the beginning. Yes. His mom had a heart attack yesterday at a, at a oh, you know, Mother's Day party, and they lost her today. 
Oh, that's, that's sucks, condolences man. to him and the family. I will see you this week, Francisco. And so, but outside of that, um, we love each and every one of you. Cherish your mother. Cherish your family. And and question everything as as what both Kenny and I tell you. Yes. Don't take anyone's. Oh, I'm not that. I almost said your line, <laughs> but don't take things at face value. You That's know, right. Somebody tells you a fantastic story. It's cool, but question it because because it's our house. <laughs> that makes no sense, but okay. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm hungry. All I'm right. Go get something to eat. <laughs> yes. Quite All right. Boys and girls, never stop learning. Ladies and gentlemen, take no one's word for it. And we are out in three, three, two, two one. <laughs> you jackass. <laughs>